Hi everyone, this is Miss Segovia and I'm gonna walk you through your notes on cellular transport. Go ahead and take a minute and cornell your notes up. Don't go too big on your margins here because you're gonna need them. And only leave a line or two at the bottom for the summary because you're gonna need most of this page. So let's start out with the fact that we have a plasma membrane. So the plasma membrane is a really cool one because it is selectively permeable. And allow me to zoom in here because I just realized I'm way out. The plasma membrane is selectively permeable and the meaning only certain molecules are allowed in and out of our cells. So are allowed in and out of cells. Uh, you can kind of think of this as um, if we had a little club of our own, right? If you ever go out to the club, you've got this little guy here standing at the front, and he's the bouncer. And he says, B-O-N-C-E-R, sorry, I got He's the bouncer. And he's like, hey, you look cool. You can come in my club. And you'd be like, oh, no, dude, you can't. Nope, nope, turn around, go home. We don't want you here. That is what the plasma membrane does for your cell. So let's hit a couple of keywords right there. We've got plasma membrane. And we've got selectively permeable. And I wish I could use another word that was a lot easier to pronounce, but selectively permeable is the word that the scientists use and the word that you've got to learn. So when we talk about that selective permeability and the movement of molecules in and out of the cell, there's a couple different ways that can happen. The first way we're going to discuss is diffusion. Oop, I already broke my lid. So diffusion is stating the fact that particles tend to move from an area where they are concentrated Now, when we say concentrated, we're not talking about just thinking really hard. We're t talking about we have lots of them to an area that is less concentrated, where we have just a few. So think about it this way, if I have a whole bunch of you in the cafeteria and we've got, you know, there's like 20 people just all standing there and you can just imagine there's people crowded, crowded, crowded and they're all in this big room and then somebody says, hey, you know what, why don't you come over here, there's only like two of us. You know, you would be like, do you want to stand in the crowd of 20? Or do you want to stand like where there's two or three people? You're like, yeah, I just need some space. I, I'm just going to move in there and, and be chill. And so that's kind of how diffusion works. This requires no energy and is a form, so we're just going to put and is, so we can save some space, passive transport. Passive transport just means it's natural, it happens, no extra energy required, it's easy to do, not a problem. So keywords here, we've got diffusion, and the big thing, no energy, passive transport. Sometimes we also say it goes from an area 
of high concentration to an area of low concentration. It's like it's rolling downhill, tons and tons and tons, to, to just being spaced out. You know, it's chill. So you got a guy who's going to be like, you know what, I'm going to walk over here and hang with these people because there's just too many, too many. We also have a special form of passive transport that happens with water. So let's do this in a beautiful watery light blue because it's kind of related. And that is called osmosis. Now a movie that's fun to watch but has nothing to do with actually osmosis is Osmosis Jones. But I know a lot of you have heard the word osmosis through him. So this is the diffusion of water. All right, so just water across a, here's that word again, selectively permeable membrane. Just got to get used to those big words, guys. I know they're, they're hard. So sorry, I cut it off a little bit there. So diffusion of water across the selectively permeable membrane. And this allows a cell to maintain, I love this word, homeostasis. A homeo stasis. S-T-A-S-I-S, -S, sorry. So homeostasis is a big word right there. And so um, this has to do with um, solutions being hypotonic, isotonic, and hypertonic. And that's all regulating the water movement and making sure water goes this way or it doesn't go that way and uh, keeping everything cool. So our big words here, we got osmosis. And I was gonna super highlight the diffusion of water and we're trying to keep it in homeostasis. And then hypo, so hyper, hopefully at some point you get to do this cool little chart, which is hyper iso and hypo. Hyper, hypo, iso, blah, blah, blah. Sorry, tongue twister. Okay, now, sometimes we have molecules that are a little too big to go through a membrane and can't quite get through, or they have a charge, and they need a little bit of help. I'm gonna switch to regular pencil here. Um, and so they use a process called facilitated diffusion. And so they just get a little extra help. And so, um, again, Molecules that cannot diffuse on their own move through membranes, I'm sorry, through proteins in the membrane. And so, um, zoom out just a touch there. All right, so facilitated. And I know that's not showing up too good on the camera, so let me see if I can make it a little bit better. I had an oops earlier and had to white out. Um, so if we were to like draw a little picture of this, um, if you remember, our membrane is the dual layer. And if I draw a little protein in here, We'll I'll call this one, this is actually a channel protein, because it's got a little channel through it, kind of like the English Channel, a little river running through England. Um, so we've got all our little phospholipid bilayer and the little tails. And each one has two, I'm just being sloppy to get them all in there. Um, so we've got these little guys. And I might have a molecule like sugar or glucose that's a little too big to go through the membrane on its own. And so, or it has a charge like a positive or negative charge to it. And so to help it go through, there's special proteins that allow them to pass through the membrane and go to the other side. 
And so again, this will go from an area of high concentration. So we might have a ton of little glucoses over here, and there's not that many on the other side. So they'll just pass through. So where they're really crowded to where they got some space. So again, we'll just do our little thing here to help reinforce. reinforce. We go from high concentration to low concentration, where there's lots, lots and lots of them, to just a few. And ultimately, we go until we're balanced. And then we'd be in homeostasis there with that nice little balance going on. So this is facilitated diffusion. And the cool thing about it is that since they're going from high concentration to low concentration, it requires no energy. It's free. Yay. So super, super easy for it to move through there because it doesn't require anything extra. Now, every now and then, cells need to pump some stuff across the membrane. And so this requires uh, some energy to happen. And we, <laughs> there goes a pencil, sorry. Um, and so we call this active transport. My bloods keep breaking. I write too hard. So active transport. Active transport is where we have um, proteins. We'll actually call these their carrier proteins. That require energy. Can't write today. Sorry that require energy. He's got to holler when I'm off screen. I know you do, even though I can't hear you. Um, require energy to move products, or particles, sorry, not really products. Against the concentration And the last little word, let's see if I can squeeze it in here, is concentration gradient. So you can kind of think of this like when you ride a roller coaster, if you've ever had a chance to go to Six Flags, it's like at the very beginning of the roller coaster and you're down at the bottom of the hill and you got all the little people and they're like, woo, we're going to go to a roller coaster. Probably like the second scariest part of the ride is that trip up the hill before you get to go down the big drop. On the opposite side, this right here, that little time, is active transport. And so, and I'm microphone here. Um, so this is our active part right here. So we're going from low concentration and we're moving up the hill to the higher concentration. And so, you know, where normally you um, don't want to be in a crowded, crowded room, now we're taking one or two people and we're shoving them into a room that's got like a hundred people and we're just squishing you in. And for me to squish you into a room, it's going to take lots of energy. And so that is active transport. So we're squishing you against your will into a super, super crowded room and now you got to deal with it. So active transport, and the big thing here is it requires energy. We've got to have energy put into the system to make it happen. All right, last two things are two processes that are both a uh, part of an energy consumption, and that is endocytosis and exocytosis. So in endocytosis, that word kind of sounds like into. And so here we have large particles are, let me draw a little line here so I remember to keep these separate, um, engulfed. I love this word. Engulfed engulfed and enclosed by a cell membrane. And so if I draw this one, it's kind of like a cell. If I have this like 
cute little adorable particle and he's just like minding his own business he's like hi I'm just a little particle hanging out here yeah isn't life awesome isn't it great and then all of a sudden it's like da -dum, da -dum. and there's a great big cell and he's like oh, I'm gonna eat you and he surrounds this little guy and squishes around him and ultimately he goes and he'll pinch off a little bubble so it would look like this you have the membrane swallows him up and our little guy is stuck in a bubble inside the cell he's like oh no what's happened to me I got engulfed by a cell using endocytosis no! and the cell essentially will merge him with a lysosome and destroy him yeah and so cells use this to bring in food, they use it to um, destroy bacteria, all cells are awesome. And then cells also have the opposite process. Hold on. Okay, so in exocytosis, we have kind of the opposite thing happening where that little, like let's say it's gone and it's broken down, that little uh, particle, and the cell decides that, you know, we don't need this little cell, that this, this green blob that we just destroyed. You know, he was cute and innocent and whatnot, or at least he looked like it, but now we're done with him. And so it'll take all those particles and it's gonna merge them with the outer cell membrane and it's going to expel them and spit them out, essentially, out into the world. So imagine here our cute little, uh, bacteria he's cute but he's evil he got swallowed up by a cell engulfed through endocytosis he was digested by a lysosome and broken down and then bleh, spit out the other side so let's go ahead and write that down because I know my story is fascinating but you need a definition so large particles are released from a cell by secreting, I love that word, secrete, looks like secret but it's got an extra E, by secrete, oh it should be I-N-G, sorry, secreting or expelling them out. So large particles are released from a cell by secreting or expelling them out. Like if you get expelled by school, we kicked you out. But we don't want to do that because we want you to be successful and graduate and become rich and famous and send some money back to us. All right. So exocytosis is that key vocab term there. And I know that was a lot of notes. If you ran out of paper, just do it on a sheet at the bottom and, uh, tab it out. Uh, some of you have asked for this, so I'm going to do a slow, dramatic zoom. So here we have cellular transport. The plasma membrane is selectively permeable, meaning only certain molecules are allowed in and out of the cells, like a bouncer. In diffusion, particles tend to move from an area of high concentrate, or from an area where they are concentrated, there's lots of them, to an area of less concentration. So we go from a big group to just a few, from high concentration to a low concentration. This requires no energy and is passive transport. Osmosis, the diffusion of water across the selectively permeable membrane, allows the cell to maintain homeostasis, our hypotonic, isotonic, and hypertonic processes. And then we have, and it looks sloppy, forgot to underline, facilitated diffusion. Our molecules that cannot diffuse on their own move through proteins in the membrane. We're still going from high to low, from lots to few, and it still requires no energy, just needs a little help from a protein. Then we have active transport, carrier proteins that require energy to move particles against the concentration gradient. In this case, we're going from low to high, like when you go up a roller coaster hill. It takes some energy. It has to have active energy put in there. And finally, endocytosis, large particles are engulfed and enclosed by a cell membrane. So the cell takes them in, and in exocytosis, large particles are released from a cell by secreting or expelling them out. So in this case, if we took in a little um, evil bacteria, 
we brought them in, we merged them with the lysosome, destroyed them, and then spit out the particles to say, we no longer need you. Blech. And that, folks, are your notes on cellular transport. Thanks.